Howdy gamers, in this video I'm going to be going over the runes for Zac, top, jungle, and support. Starting off with top lane, the keystones for him that are the most useful are Conquer and Aftershock. With Conquer being more useful as it gives him more trading tools, but you do gain some extra functionality and then more utility mostly for your team with Aftershock. So starting off with Conquer, um, basic attacks are spells that deal damage to enemy cha champions, grant you two stacks of Conquer for six seconds gaining bonus adaptive force based on your level. Since you're gonna be playing in the top lane, that adaptive force is gonna be more useful quicker as you're getting more levels, and then therefore more adaptive force from Conquer. Once you stack up Conquer 10 times, then you heal for 15% of the damage that you deal to enemy champions. Conquer works really well on Zac as it's built up almost instantly whenever you use your abilities. So you E, that's two, U W, that's four, U Q, that's six, U auto, that's two and then just one more auto or the second part of the queue anything is going to be proccing fully proccing the conquer and then you don't even need a fully proc to be benefiting from it um, through the ap ratios gain and it's mostly for the healing once it's fully proccing is that that's where zach really gets a lot of his utility is hit spinning every ability at once and then spamming the w once he goes in so healing for 15% of the damage dealt by multiple Ws, especially whenever you're in a 2v2, a 3v3, anything beyond a 1v1 is where you really start getting insane values out of Conquer. But the, the utility of it in a 1v1 is that you're probably matching the enemy top laner's Conquer, and then the damage that's offered and the healing that's offered goes a lot further than something like Aftershock. And then whenever you start team fighting, that effect is even more exacerbated where you also have a percentage health damage with the W built up from the ability power, it's really a solid way to get ability power without really trading off anything meaningful in the runes. So in the top lane, really good uh, trading tool and then also an all-in tool as once it's stacked up, you could, be, you could be fighting for like 20 seconds and it's still gonna be going, especially with how Zac functions. You also have huge turn potential. Let's say if you were to die, use your passive, it's still going because the Sunfire Cape, and then you know you spend every ability after you come out of the passive. But yeah, generally speaking, laning tool, and then whenever you start team fighting, uh, mostly just for the healing. For the secondary runes, you have good options in really just Triumph. Overheal doesn't really make any sense. Zach makes really good use out of Triumph because with Triumph, takedowns restore twelve percent of your missing health and grant you additional twenty gold. With this, obviously, whenever you get lower, it's going to be more useful. And Zach is one of the best champions at doing that, is at getting really, really low and then surviving. And then even if you're coming out of your passive, you'd still gain benefit out of Triumph. And then where it's based off kill and assist, whenever you start team fighting, it's going to be even better because you're usually getting uh, damage off on five champions. And then if any of them die, that's going to help you survive longer in a fight. And then therefore, just be more useful as you're dealing more damage if you're on top of champions versus not. And then if you're dead, you're not dealing any damage. So it helps you skirt around at lower amounts of HP and then that's really the utility in it. For the third rune, tenacity is really your only option. Uh, attack speed and life steal don't make any sense on Zac. The tenacity gain from this is kind of whatever as even if Zac doesn't have tenacity, he really doesn't care as he's gonna stay on targets anyways because of his E, but it's there, it's something. For the fourth rune, your best bet is going to be last stand. You have the option of uh, dealing more damage to champions who are low with Coupe de Grasse, dealing more damage to champions with more max health than you with cut down, which is your worst option, and then dealing more damage based on how much health you're missing with last stand, which is obviously just so synergistic with not only Conquer and Triumph, but then also with Zach's kit overall. So with last stand, you deal 5 to 11% increased damage to champions, while you are below 60% HP, and then the max damage is gained at 30%, which Zach can get to really easily. He can, because he's spending his HP to cast his abilities. So it's just Zach might be one of the highest like synergy champions with this rune uh, in the whole game. And then the damage that it's amplifying is mostly just your W damage, and then that damage is percentage max health damage. So it just goes a long way. And then you're also going to be increasing the damage of your Sunfire the rest of your abilities, your auto attack, everything, literally everything. So one of the best runes for Zach, and that's really where a lot of your damage is coming from. Like really pay attention to that number. 
in game and then see like how it builds up in a fight, especially if you're recording your games. For the secondary runes, uh, you have really good options in Bone Plating or Second Wind and then Revitalize. Um, Revitalize is like a must for top lane Zac as you're always picking up your blobs and then healing from them. Revitalize is also going to combo well with Conquer and Triumph. With Revitalize, heals and shields you cast to receive are 5% stronger and an additional 10% on targets below 40% health. So again, whenever you're lower on health, this is more useful. So just a really, really solid rune. With second win and bone plating, um, you, it's basically like if you're playing into a melee champion, you want bone plating. If you're playing into a ranged champion, you want second wind. With bone plating, after you take damage from an enemy champion, the next three spells or attacks you receive from them deal 30 to 60 less damage. That's also based on your level. So into melee matchups, this is more useful because uh, bone plating is on a 45 second cooldown. So into ranged champions, they could just auto attack you once and then bone plating is down for 45 seconds versus second win. With melee champions, they don't really have the opportunity to proc it and then if you're engaging on them they have to get through bone plating to attack you so you're blocking a little over an auto attacks most of the time and then that's always going to give you time to get at least uh, two conqueror stacks from that and then also an auto attack on top at like the minimum so before the enemy is even damaging you they have to get through bone plating and where you're spending your hp initially that works it just has really good synergy with uh, with Zach, and then against melee champions, it's really really oppressive, especially if you're starting the fight against them. With second wind, after you take damage from an enemy champion, you heal for four percent of your missing health, plus six over ten seconds. So second wind effectively never has a cooldown; it can always be going. So into ranged champions, this is always going to be more useful, and even into melee champions with poke abilities, second wind's going to be more useful. So think about champions like Mordekaiser, Orn, Rumble, etc., where they, they're short range, they're melee, but they still have these abilities that are going to damage you if you're standing on the wave or just are in front of them in general. So in those matchups, second wind's going to be more useful. And then the healing from second wind is also based on your missing health. So just insane synergy with Triumph, Conquer, uh, uh, Zax Kit altogether, Revitalize, Last Stand. All these runes just have insane synergy with each other. For the shards... I think that cooldown reduction, resistance, and then based on your uh, based on your matchup, I guess you could go double resistances. You should probably just look to go scaling health since Zac uh, does well into most uh, most of the matchups that you'd be picking him into. If you're playing into a mixed damage matchup, champions like Akali, Mordekaiser, you could go armor and magic resist. Um, so you could deal with their early game damage with the armor, and then once they get like one item you would have the magic resist as well and you'd also have your in-game items on top of that but usually on like your second recall you'd maybe have like a door and shield ruby crystal and then if you don't have enough for a resistance item you'd still have it from the runes and then it, you would have it from level one and then for the rest of the game too so it would help you in the lane phase and then throughout the entire game as well so for top lane zach i think conquer sh should be what you're looking to go as it gives you personally more power in the game to work with and then more damage overall um, versus something like aftershock so with aftershock like you could run it in the top lane the utility in it is that you gain more value in your dives and then that's really it because against most top laners it i suppose if you're playing into non-standard top laners like um like range top laners like Callista. Um, Lucian, etc. Aftershock's probably your better bet because building up Conquer against them is harder and then staying on top of them is harder. And then Aftershock becomes more valuable because the stats against them is more useful and then you're also not battling Conquer versus Conquer. Where if you jump on the enemy proc Aftershock, it, their auto attacks against you and their abilities are dealing less damage but then they're also building up Conquer. And then if they simply stay on top of you and continue to auto attack, their Conquer is probably beating you out because you've spent Aftershock and you really don't have anything else after that. You can still run Triumph uh, Triumph and Last Stand with Aftershock, so that's fine, but I really think this is like a worse version of Volley Bear if you were to run uh, run Aftershock for Zach in the top lane, but I think it has its matchups in which you should look to use it, so it's not entirely useless, it's just as a default, I would really steer like newer players away from it, especially if you're looking to get into Zach as this is really just to support your jungler or like let's say if you're playing Zac plus Graves it would make sense because you'd be able to dive the enemy top laner over and over again with this and then be able to survive but 
if you're just basically in a 1v1, um, then I would say that obviously Conqueror is better because it just gives you more personal power. So that's my thoughts on, uh, th that's basically my thoughts on uh, top lane Zacharins. Um, you get a lot of power and tr trading potential with the Conqueror and then it's just so useful. It's just, you, you have so much healing from it. You, so basically Conqueror, Last Stand, Damage, Triumph, Tenacity, well, Triumph, Second Wind, Revitalize, Healing, and then Tenacity, literally whatever. Um, for the shards, again, cooldown reduction is going to be more useful because all of your damage is coming from your W, and all of your utility is coming from your E and Q cast. So you are just getting more damage than you would get from the Adaptive Force from the cooldown reduction because of how Zach's damage um, is goes out. And even though you're a tank, I don't think that the attack speed would really be that useful either. Um, because one W cast is always going to be beating out. Like even if you were to get two more auto attacks off with uh, with the attack speed from the shards. So that's my thoughts on uh, top lane Zach runes. As it's God, like I think I don't know. I have the most fun whenever I play Zach in the top lane with Conqueror versus in any other role because it's just so oppressive, especially if you beat the enemy top laner. For jungle, I think uh, well with jungle. You're going to have less gold, and then a lot of what your utility is going to be is through your engages. So Aftershock becomes a lot more useful. You don't have to worry about a laning phase in which you're battling like Conqueror versus Aftershock. Because in the jungle, it's really just you versus the enemy jungler or versus the laners. So Aftershock becomes way more useful as you don't have to, you don't have to be constantly fighting. So having something like Conqueror isn't as valuable. You're not playing this, uh, well, you are playing an economic game in which you get less gold, so the stats offered from Aftershock become more useful, especially when you would cap out at levels around the mid game. So your engage potential becomes a lot higher, a lot safer, and really you become a uh, really effective low econ jungler, and then you scale really hard into the late game. Even though you have a slower early game, a strong mid game, um, but you, if you get into the late game with Zac, it's really, 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 really strong. And Aftershock continues to be useful regardless of the end game time. So for the jungle, um, the only keystone I'd recommend would be Aftershock. With Aftershock, after you uh, immobilize an enemy champion, you gain increased armor and magic resist. Um, you gain 35 plus 80% of your bonus resistances for 2.5 seconds. And then they it deals a it deals damage to uh, champions around you whenever you proc it. So anytime you'd be landing your E, you're probably going to be getting the damage off, so long that the enemy's not flashing away from you. With the change to aftershock this season too, aftershock's only on a 20 second cooldown, so you could gank a lane and then gank another one, and aftershock would be up again, versus like last season where it's about a minute cooldown. So with this, you're going to get the extra resistances. So even if you're building like Cinder Hulk into like let's say Spirit Visage, the resistances would be useful. If you're building Spirit or Cinder Hulk into like Gargoyles, the resistances are going to be effective. Like two items, three items, four items, the resistances are still going to be effective on Zach. So it really just never stops being good. And where the cooldown is really low too, you can look to abuse that by constantly ganking in the. Uh, later stages of the early game to really abuse this rune and then also abuse abuse Zach's like presence in the jungle. For the secondary runes, I would recommend Font of Life. Since you are a support to your team, a Font of Life gives you a ton of, or more so gives your team a ton of value, but then in return gives you a ton of value. Or Zach's, Zach doesn't function in a 1v1 in the jungle, basically, like he could, but he really doesn't. And then where you're basically always 2v2ing, Font of Life is also going to be getting, even if you're playing, even if like, let's say you're uh, fighting with your mid laner, like a, like a Syndra, they would still be benefiting from Font of Life. And the, the just giving everyone a basically more effective HP to play with versus your only other option that would be good would be Demolish. And then, yes, you could get more turret plates, but the effective HP from Font of Life is also useful at all stages of the game versus Demolish, which is really only useful the first like 10 minutes of the game, it, and if ganks are successful. So you really have to do more for 
demolish to be useful and I don't think Zach is a champion that has to do that so just shouldn't look to do it. For the third rune, uh, you could look to run conditioning. Conditioning in the jungle compared to top lane, like second wind and bone planing are both really useful top lane laning tools so to miss out on either one of them is really whack and then both of these are also really useful at all stages of the game for top lane. For jungle, you could get away with running conditioning as with conditioning, after 12 minutes, you gain 9 armor and 9 magic resist and increased your armor and magic resist by 5%. So where you're not getting any stats in the jungle or you're, you're not getting any items in the jungle, conditioning becomes kind of just like free gold value without having to get an item. And it's really hard to make use out of bone planing or second wind in the jungle altogether. So I think running conditioning is completely fine. In matchups in which you'd be fighting earlier more, um, I think you could look to run bone planing in the jungle um, with Zac, but if you're just full clearing, then uh, then conditioning is always going to be your best bet. And then revitalize would still be a better option in the jungle, even though you wouldn't be uh, trading as much like you would be in the top lane. I think revitalize would be completely fine. And then with overgrowth, you could get more effective HP, but for your initial engage. But I think that would be more useful for support than it would be for jungle because you're still getting enough levels, and then. You're getting enough levels to get points in your W um, fast enough to where the healing is impactful uh, on Revitalize early enough. For the secondary runes for jungle, you don't really have a lot of useful options. Uh, you could run like Triumph and Last Stand secondary if you're trying to get more damage, but that's not so useful as Zach's going... Your damage is reliant on your laner's damage basically. And to add extra damage through just last stand in the jungle doesn't really add up add a, like fast enough because you're mostly just about your E in the jungle. For domination, you also have terrible options. You could run like Sudden Impact and I suppose like Ultimate Hunter, but your ult is up fast enough. And then sudden the damage that Sudden Impact is going to add isn't going to do anything either because you're going to kill them or not based on your laner's damage and then also based on if you got a good enough engage off. For the sorcery tree, uh, you could have okay options with like transcendence and maybe water walking, maybe nullifying orb as well. But the scaling option in these is probably just better done in the inspiration tree uh, because you have to wait to get to level 10 for transcendence, which isn't bad for Zach. And then the stats from water walking also just aren't too useful. And then the movement speed from it also isn't that useful because you're usually you're basically always ganking from the fog of war with your with your jump on Zack, so the movement speed from the river isn't as necessary or as useful, even when you're fighting around objectives for Zack. So I think your best bet is probably in the inspiration tree with either perfect timing or magical footwear first. Um, I think magical footwear is probably your more consistent buy as with magical footwear you're saving 300 gold and then also getting plus 10 movement speed, which is kind of useful whenever you get on top of targets and then with perfect timing um, it would give you the one-time stopwatch it would kind of ex accelerate your build path into gargoyles as well but it would mostly be about the playmaking potential with the one-time stopwatch so at higher MMRs I suppose perfect timing would probably be more useful in Zack jungle but in general uh, in solo queue I think magical footwear is going to be your best option because even if the enemy jungler is getting ganks off as you're full clearing on your first clear um, you would still be even with them if they get one successful gang off, gank off because you would still have 300 gold saved with magical footwear. So it creates a really nice uh, economic battle for, for, for Zach. And then the only other good option would be Cosmic Insight where you get 5% cooldown reduction on your abilities, summoner spells, and items. So mostly just for your flash and then for your E and W. And then for the runes, it'd be pretty much the same as top lane with cooldown reduction, armor, and then scaling health. Uh, I think the scaling health is more useful in the jungle as, again, all the free stats you can get, which is kind of the theme of this rune page in the jungle, is just free stats from Aftershock, free stats from Conditioning, and then uh, scaling health from the runes. Just a lot of free tankiness, basically. And is a lot of what you should be looking to abuse the runes for in the jungle role is just getting a lot of things for free and then uh, providing value to your team through the utility you can have and that's 
what all of these runes do. You have utility and the cooldown reduction from Cosmic Insight and the shards, and then all the tankiness that you provide, or all the utility you provide through getting on the enemy and then having the stats behind you to actually stay on top of them and then still be relevant through the through the CC and then through the damage that you're offering. So for the support runes, it really wouldn't be that different. I think for support, um, you would only change up running bone plating and then probably perfect timing in Cosmic Insight. Um, you probably run double armor as support or armor and magic resist, depending on the bot lane matchup. Um, and then uh, I suppose you could run overgrowth in, in the support role because it's really just about your E and Q as support, not just your well, no, you probably still max the W second on support, but it, you, it wouldn't be so much about your healing versus staying alive on your initial engage, I would think, as support. So I think overgrowth would probably be fine, um, as you would have more HP to play with whenever you would initially engage versus healing more from Revitalize, but I'm not entirely sure on that. I would have to play it out and feel it some, but... Uh, yeah, that's probably all. Well, actually, uh, minion dematerializer would also be useful for for support because you'd be able to dematerialize cannon minions and in melee matchups that becomes more prevalent, especially at higher MMRs. But in general, perfect timing and cosmic insight is always going to be your best bet in in solo queue for support. Everything else in the secondary runes becomes even more useless for support. Something like triumph and last stand would just be a joke. So, yeah. That's my thoughts on Zach runes. Uh, if this video helped you, for the love of God, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment about what you like about Zach runes or some something, man. And then like, yeah, like me on MySpace, favorite, subscribe. In the description, you can check out all sorts of cool sh stuff about Zach. So check it out. Thanks for watching. Peace out.